Welcome back for more Generator Rex Unveiled, everybody. Popping back into this evil infested world, we always have to wonder, how did the planet end up like this? Today, we're gonna examine everyone's favorite mad scientist, Rex's big brother, Cesar Salazar. Born to scientist Raphael and Violette Salazar, Cesar at an early age showed an in-depth understanding of the world and himself, saying that nothing had surprised him since his youth. Cesar was actually the one that triggered the Nanite event. Cesar and the other scientists agreeing that the Nanites were too dangerous of a creation to be allowed to fall into the hands of the rich and power-hungry elite known as the Consortium. Just before the explosion, Cesar fled to his research pod and activated its subspace engines to get away. The engines were supercharged and launched the pod into orbit at near light speed. To put it into perspective, the speed he was traveling at was so great that in the 15 minutes it took to take control of the machine, five years had gone by in the rest of the world. This leads me to believe that Cesar had actually broken the theory of special relativity and figured out how to tweak space and time. While I don't think Cesar's age is ever confirmed, it's clear Rex was a child when this happened, and even five years later, Cesar still stands tall above his younger brother. With Rex's ages being between 15 and 16, I don't really recall, Cesar looks around 30, similar to Sixer Holiday. Cesar's first actual appearance is in Season 2, Episode 7, Mixed Signals where he beamed locator schematics into Rex's head and laid down siege on Providence, which alone was kind of impressive, as Cesar actually overpowered Providence in their own headquarters. He used a sonic wave-like device and had bulletproof armor and shielding. He even actually showed a protective side towards Rex, being concerned of his brother's safety and if he had been hurt. After being filled in on the five-year gap, we get a glimpse of Cesar's quirky nature. While being assaulted by Evos and Abysses during the commotion, he randomly asks Rex if he wants to see a picture of their father. Rex is responding with, in turn, the question that his brother wasn't quite all there. This exact nature is what leads Rex to at some times not trust his brother, as while Cesar could be considered a good guy, he still seems a mad scientist at heart. The next time Rex interacts with Cesar, we see him state that he's making a mango smoothie with a magnet powerful enough to dissemble a tank from a kilometer away. And as you can see, Cesar is responsible for some creations that stretch the boundary of brilliant and mad. The more popular ones being Zagrs and Alpha, both world-threatening artificial intelligence. Zagrs being able to orchestrate city-level projects that would threaten things on a planetary scale, like turning the planet into literally dust, or it could hack into space stations. Which I have zero doubt that Zagrs wasn't capable of the worst scenario in which it could have just sent the world into a nuclear apocalypse by hacking military systems. Luckily, Cesar programmed it for safety, protection, and care, even going as far as to give his own mother's name. Which I think, while sweet, is an indicator of Cesar actual thought processes and how they can sometimes involve many different things to come to his end conclusion. Alpha was actually designed to think for itself and grew into its own being free of its original program. Alpha was arguably on part as Zagrs if not stronger in terms of destructiveness, being able to devour other nanites or machines and add those to his own form. This could have been a real similar case of first form cell from Dragon Ball Z's attacks on various cities. Alpha could, if inclined, juice an entire population, reducing them to ashes, and its ability to assimilate other technology into itself, like the Omnitrix, shows Alpha has a highly adaptive nature that, left unchecked, will always find a way to manifest and survive. Even in the end, they couldn't just simply make Alpha disappear. They sealed him away and, well, he got ate by Ben. And in the same crossover, we confirm Cesar Dapples and String Theory and has accessed other worlds, shown with a Dimensional Disruptor, aka a Null Void Gun, which which in its own universe is level 10 technology, meaning Cesar's tech could rival that of the Galvin. Creations like this are why Agent 6 personally sees Cesar as a liability and doesn't trust him, though White hires him to work for Providence, which unfortunately even after the time skip, Cesar still is employed by, and as we find out, he is responsible for the creation of the White Collars used to subdue and enslave Evo. Going as far as to use this on Rex at Black Knight's behest, and even having a backup prototype set up just in case. Though it has to be noted in the end, Cesar had always had the goal of protecting Rex, often while working for the other side, leaving hints and technically playing both sides to achieve the goal of helping his younger brother. We see he immensely valued Rex, and did often questionable actions in the pursuit of the protection of Rex. It is thanks to Cesar in the end that Rex was able to beat not only Van Kleist, but the Consortium, as he even said that it was all for Rex. Rex was the only person that the Master Nanite would obey. 
Going further, he even tried to restore Rix's memories, though this went horribly wrong and he ended up wiping Six's memories and resetting him to a cold, hard, raunchy killer, though this is more due to White's prodding versus Cesar's fault, but in the end, they chose to re-educate Six versus using Cesar's machine again, cause it still had a chance of wiping all of Six's memories. This furthers my point of Cesar being, although often rather detached or lacking of emotion, truthfully, I think this was simply Cesar's quirky nature. This hyper-awareness coupled with his innate child like sense of wonder yet brilliance leads me to believe that Cesar is actually somewhere on the behavioral spectrum. In the episode Written in the Sand, he can be shown to get so wrapped up in his work he didn't even know that his younger brother was missing, then once notified, easily finds Rex because he knows that Rex produces selenium like dandruff and just tracks him down. Cesar's same obsessive nature and rational mind is the reason the world became infected with evos rather than allow the consortium to monopolize godhood. Cesar said let's blow it all up, though this wasn't just a rush plan, Cesar was a part of the other scientists that didn't want the nanites to fall into bad or corrupted hands. I doubt he planned for the world to become what it was, nor expected Van Kleist to off his parents in the reactor, nor for things like Zagars to evolve into sentient, world-killing beings. And in what was 15 minutes to Cesar, five years went by, and despite this, Cesar was amazed by the new world, quickly gaining as much info and applying it as fast as possible as if he never left. This same quirk is what makes him seem detached at times. Cesar is quite literally neurodivergent, his behavior is a perfect example of such. Not only did Cesar not even see Dr. Holliday as a romantic interest, he didn't even see her as attractive, and this is despite even Bobo admitting that she was hot. Even going further, Cesar literally broke down the chemical reaction process that was love to his younger brother and wanted to design a holographic haunted house to help Rex get girls in the end, getting more attention and a general discussion from the girls than Rex and Noah's entire day of parlor tricks. Cesar's many inventions are shown and all are like their creator, unpredictable and unstable. One of Cesar's inventions is what he used to pseudo-revive Dr. Rylander. While not full resurrection, it's clear that Cesar has broken the bounds of humanity by being able to reassemble the molecules of Dr. Rylander after an explosion. To pull Rylander back from the brink and have him actually be of use and coherent, Caesar essentially brought back Rylander's soul to the earth. While I personally did question his legitimacy, Cesar proved to be the actual hidden benefactor of the show. He proves time and time again that he was already thinking far enough ahead and is rarely surprised by any unknown variable that he could encounter. He was truly one of the major unique characters in the show, and in the end, I don't think we can label Cesar as mad. Van Kleist was honestly more of a mad scientist as he literally worked on an experiment and then wanted to become a god. Cesar, for all intents and purposes, always created things he thought would benefit others and always had his family on his mind while doing so. In the end, I'd say he was definitely brilliant, not mad. Thanks for checking out another episode, everybody. 